so we had the word uh, predestination and uh, uh, we can uh, trace the uh, roots of uh, it in uh, the European Renaissance and uh, you have uh, you are studying uh, drama of that period uh, Marlowe and Shakespeare uh, and you know uh, the relationship between the background uh, reading and uh, the background topics and the text of that period. So when we look at uh, Dr. Faustus, so we see uh, the problem of Faustus. What is the problem of Faustus? Okay. Or when we look at the European society during Christianity, okay, before the Renaissance, okay, uh, that it's a period when uh, as caste uh, uh, holds us and uh, it does not allow, it does not give mobility. Similarly, a period in uh, Europe, a uh, church, Bible and uh, other sastras, other, uh, other biblical texts or mythical things, okay? They all interpret human life from the perspective of the text. So the text itself become the basis of argument. The text will exercise its authority. And human was not in the center. So the development in the Renaissance and onward is that human comes in the center. It means that now it is not the text, it is not the Bible that will interpret human, but human will be interpreted in the uh, new in the light of the new knowledge that is based on rationality or logic. So who human, who human is will have a new definition uh, after the Renaissance. Uh, and then human can study, human can read, human can develop, human can explore, human can think, human can uh, develop mathematics, human can develop science. So this is the, and any human, not particular human or not select or not few. So a very new idea about human and that is what we call humanism and that is what we, what we call humanities. So our subject is humanities because we do not derive our logic or rationality from any, any sastras or, or rigid structures or authorities like uh, whether authority of God or authority of a priest or authority of a scripture. We don't derive our logic from there. That is why we are humanities. Okay. And uh, that is why we have independence of arguing who we are and what is our destination. And we have to build it. Now, let us come from there to the 19th century India, where uh, first college is opened in 1857-56. And later on, a uh, lot of ideas of India. India is not uh, less argumentative than Europe. In our uh, past, also we have number of uh, uh, philosophers and thinkers. For example, in the ancient period, how many philosophers do we have who talk like Socrates, who talk like Aristotle? We have, for example, uh, Gautam Rishi. So Gautam Rishi developed uh, Nyaya Sastra. Nyaya Sastra is uh, the system of logic and rationality. That on the basis of logic, you decide something. Okay, And uh, so our uh, 19th century period explores both Indian past as well as the uh, what ideas came in Europe during the Renaissance and later on in the French Revolution and so on and so forth. So we have a you know a different kind of interpretation of uh, our society. And in 19th century, another very important person is Jyoti Rao Phule, okay, in the south, okay, Maharashtra. Jyoti Rao Phule, Savitri Bai Phule, okay. So these people. Uh, challenge caste system on the basis of rationality. 
so you have you know a movement is started and when the 20th century comes okay uh, uh, congress is formed in the end at the end of the 19th century freedom struggle is going on print culture has come to india printing press is there newspapers are being published and every day indians are becoming uh, uh, more and more aware of uh, their freedom of their sovereignty and uh, so political uh, awareness is also increasing in that period uh, ambedkar's annihilation of caste is talking about very very important uh, a thesis that challenges the scripture that challenges the authority that challenges the any kind of institutionalized reality institutionalized for example generally scriptures do not speak institutions speak a temple speaks a ritual speaks a ceremony speaks you know and uh, you see so scripture where, where is the scripture scripture exists in the different kind of everyday practices from where one develops a sense of uh, existence and belonging so caste in a way uh, created uh, this kind of scenario where so x people will belong to x caste and x profession and x mindset and y people will belong to a uh, y people y caste and y mindset and so and accordingly the resources will also be distributed and annihilation of caste therefore challenges this whole idea and definitely ambedkar takes us back to the scriptures to the areas from where the defenders of caste derive their logic so defenders of caste are are in a way stating something which is against the modern thought of human humanism or humanities you cannot decide a human on the basis of a scripture or you cannot decide the caste or on the basis of scripture or color you cannot decide someone's aptitude or intelligence on the basis of uh, uh, one's forefathers and on the basis of what scriptures say about him okay so i think this is important has no place in it it is based on the dogma of predestination so that's a dogma is a is a is a is a is not uh, a rational uh, idea okay and uh, considerations of social efficacy would compel us to recognize that the greatest evil in the industrial system is not so much poverty and uh, the suffering that it involves as the fact that so many persons have callings which make no appeal to those who are engaged in them such callings constantly provoke one to aversions ill will and a desire to evade so he is uh, a modern thinker he knows the industrial system of production and he is giving examples from there uh, how uh, how a modern uh, human is cannot be determined or predestined by any old dogmatic ideas and caste is an old dogmatic idea is an institution that has been brought up for certain purpose and the purpose was to divide political power political power is not political in the sense you think but political means food water clothes education these are the, if you have all these five things then you are politically powerful so political does not mean which political party you belong to and uh, where uh, which ideology you belong to no simple thing is if you have a pond of water in the village can all the people take water from here this is a political issue okay and uh, that is why in uh, 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 ambedkar started mahad agitation mahad agitation was in his village where the pond of water was reserved only for the upper caste low caste people could not fetch water from there so he along with his followers started an agitation on a particular day 
they came to the uh, pond they had water from there but at the same time the upper caste people arrived with the lathis danda and the gunda and they all uh, started beating them including ambedkar they were all beaten uh, blood was there that's also occurred and that was an act of political will why because water belong to all not to few okay and the same day he also burned one burnt one uh, shastra called manusmriti manusmriti dahan uh, divas okay so why because this scripture uh, talked of lot of predestination lot of caste lot of rigidity lot of dogmatic ideas and uh, upper caste hindus exercise their mind and they develop uh, so it's not idea it's not just that the uh, political idea was bad because the political idea resulted into denying water or denying food or denying access to education that is so if you have worst political idea fine you have it but if your political idea will deny me by by right to water then this is uh, uh, something very uh, you know uh, very cunning okay so that's what he was uh, taking up there are many occupations in india which on account of the fact that they are regarded as degraded by the hindus rock those who are engaged to in them to aversion there is a constant desire to evade and escape from such occupations which arise arises solely because of the blit, blightening effect uh, which they produce upon those who follow them owing to the slight and stigma cast upon them by the hindu religion so another point is the stigma stigmatized stigma stigma is when you say i just give you example if you start calling somebody thief in childhood and then you keep on calling that person thief one day uh, that person starts realizing or having effect of this expression in his psychology and it is possible under the influence of it he becomes a deviant or a, he deviates from the social uh, structure and he does something which can prove that yes everybody was saying right for last 10 years because this is what he is but the fact is that you took 10 years in stigmatizing him in stigmatizing him similarly stigma is a tool of maintaining caste you, you stigmatize people uh, with uh, say low caste or sweeper or this or that or barber or you know like that and over a period of time they have that and they become that so ultimately the barber son or daughter who goes to school may not go to school after 3 4 years because inside the school even teacher says that you are barber's daughter ultimately you have to you have to uh, follow marry a barber so why are you studying here okay or uh, they may say that uh your forefathers did not this is their all in autobiography dalit autobiographies these examples are thousands all dalit autobiographers have written how they were treated in the school most of the teachers from upper caste will tell them that why have you come here why don't you do some job do something become a useful person what is there in education okay or they will ridicule that you and your poor uh, fathers never went to school why are you here okay so this is called stigma so he is taking up the issue of stigma how the caste institution uses uh, this to uh, propagate this idea so as an economic organization caste is therefore harmful institution in as much as it involves the subordination of man's natural powers and inclinations to the exigencies of social rule so this is say it is against human nature what is human nature human nature is unfolded is when human grows up he is exposed to the environment and from the environment interaction he or she learns 
and it keeps on learning so entire life is a process of learning but if we determine this human being by doing an interpretation taking from the social rules then this human will not be seen from the perspective of the natural abilities a human has and so this is the uh, first uh, part where uh, caste then division of labor then division of laborers then anti human then interpretation is forced onto human existence economically it is harmful socially it is harmful and uh, there is no point in defending uh, this kind of uh, uh, system so next part so you can uh, i think first read this uh, this booklet which is of uh, some 8 to 10 pages and that will uh, give you a uh, a good uh, hooking up onto this caste does not result in economic efficiency this is another statement he gives it does not result in economic efficiency so defenders say that it it is an varad uh, vyavastha is uh, a system of economic efficiency that uh, uh, the carpenters have uh, uh, accumulated knowledge of carpentry and uh, they can always impart to their sons and daughters and it makes them very efficient carpenters so this argument is there we all know we are, people use this argument that pick up somebody from a certain caste and then people will start oh you are from this caste so your caste has this knowledge therefore uh, you should be like that okay but in reality we all understand a human born on this planet is born on the planet not born in the caste okay and the natural ingredients of the body are chemistry physics and uh, molecules blood and all and when you are exposed to the environment your learning starts so no caste no blood carry the written coding in your brain or in your blood that you will be a good carpenter so this argument of uh, economic efficiency is uh, uh, also base uh, unfounded caste cannot improve and has not improved he says well if it were a, an efficiency a model of efficiency then caste should have improved they have not improved okay we see that caste that have poverty they remain poor and caste that have privileges they keep on having privileges otherwise uh, one day the carpenter should become the king of the uh, state and uh, the uh, priest uh, should become a carpenter okay but that doesn't happen it is completely disorganized and demoralized the hindus now this is very important he says this caste system is it disorganizes and demoralizes the hindus and that's a fact okay hindus when they realize themselves in the perspective of caste is actually a model of demoralization how does it demoralize because they see themselves in the given caste they see their efficiency or their ability uh, or potential in the given caste and that is where the problem starts of it's a process of demoralizing you become demotivated okay so if you start from yourself as a human and then you see yourself then potentials uh, uh, have no boundary okay uh, and uh, the first and foremost thing that must be recognized is that hindu society is a myth now this is another 